Hey, I'm Carver Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president of Carver. Really excited to introduce the Thompson Center Encore Pro Hunter Trigger Spring Kit for your muzzle loader. A great way to improve the overall function and reliability, ensure that we don't have broken firing pins, ensure we get good hard primer strikes. We've got a great array of springs addressing different things within this muzzle loader that have been common problems with the TC Encore Pro Hunter. So something that we wanted to do first and foremost, reduce the trigger pull. We did that from four and a half pounds down to one and a half pound, a 66% trigger pull reduction, fantastic. Feels amazing. But we also wanted to make sure that we had good hard primer strikes. We wanted to protect those firing pins that were commonly breaking due to the worn out firing pin spring and also a better locking bolt spring, heavy duty locking bolt spring to ensure a better lockup between that breech and receiver. And also a heavy duty trigger guard spring for a cleaner, smoother operation when breaking down that barrel there. So really love this firearm. This is a great all around comprehensive upgrade, nice light trigger pull, and then some beefier springs to help promote the longevity and function of this firearm. Let's get on over to tabletop, show you how to put this baby in. Parts needed for this build, the TC Encore Pro Hunter Endeavor Trigger Spring Kit for your TC Encore Pro Hunter Endeavor. Whether you have the muzzle loader rifle or the pistol configuration, it'll work for both. Now with this kit, you're gonna get a number of items in here. You can see this is your trigger guard spring here. This is your hammer spring. This is your locking bolt spring, your trigger return springs in there and your little cone shaped firing pin springs in there. We've also got in this kit, which I really like, is this little assembly tool. And that's gonna make installation real easy on that trigger return spring. Gonna do a really straightforward, no BS video, really excited about it, giving you a nice clear picture of what's involved. And this is not as intimidating as it may seem. I know it's a lot of hardware in here, real simple and easy. So the lighter trigger return spring and sear spring are gonna reduce that trigger pull weight significantly. Looking forward to this. Looking forward to doing an initial reading, which typically we'll do right off the bat. But with this, we have to go into a slight disassembly before we do it to avoid any damage to the firing pin spring. In this kit, you're also gonna get a heavy duty hammer spring to ensure absolute primer ignition. The heavy duty firing pin spring is gonna ensure you won't have any sort of broken firing pins in the future. That spring wears out, you chance the risk of breaking off that firing pin when you're opening and closing the breech. It's a terrible issue. So we wanna make sure we included a heavy duty firing pin spring. Also have the heavy duty locking bolt spring. It's gonna ensure a tighter lockup, which is a must for these barrels. It's gonna make sure that you have a nice solid tight lockup. It's gonna help improve accuracy and just overall general performance. No light strikes, nothing like that. We wanna make sure a good solid lockup. You don't wanna have a loose lockup on that breech there. And then the heavy duty trigger guard spring provides a much smoother operation. Really all around a nice functional improvement for the TC Encore Pro Hunter and a lighter trigger pull, a win-win. So we'll jump right into this, really excited about it. Tools needed for this build, Phillips head screwdriver, flat head screwdriver, hammer, bench block, 1 8 inch punch, 3 32 inch punch, 1 16 inch punch, 3 16 Allen key, synthetic grease with PTFE, 7 64 Allen key, and as always guys, make sure we're an iPro. As always, we'll check our firearms together, make sure they're clear, so we'll open up the breech, check the chamber, make sure it's clear, it's clear. All right, we're good. So. Like I said, we're gonna have to do something a little bit different before we test the factory trigger pull. We don't wanna dry fire it with the firing pin and spring installed. We wanna make sure we remove it and we'll obviously remove the barrel as well. That helps reduce some of the stress on the firing pin spring, that's it. So we're just trying to preserve it. We don't wanna overstress it because that could lead to that firing pin spring wearing out. And then when you open and close the breech, that firing pin could be protruding and then bam, broken right off. So we don't want that issue. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the hand guard here. Let's start there first. Take your flathead, go ahead and remove these screws. Now the back screw is a little bit longer. So what we'll do is we'll just throw it back in the hand guard once the screws are out. Okay, so pull up and out on it. This is the shorter screw here, but they look very close. So if you get them mixed up at any point, you can just stack them together and see which one's shorter. So the shorter one goes in the front on the hand guard. Longer one goes in the rear. So we'll set the handguard aside just like this. Good way to keep it all together. And now what we want to do is remove this hinge pin. Go ahead, open up the breech, and we're going to tap out that hinge pin. Just release some of that tension on it. All right, hinge pin is out. We'll go ahead and remove the barrel. This is what that hinge pin looks like right there. Just big, solid, you know, it's universal. It'll go in either way, so no worries. So we'll set it aside with that barrel. Now from here, we'll focus on the receiver. We're gonna go ahead and remove the firing pin so that we can actually test this trigger pull. So what we need to do is get access to that firing pin. So you can see we're in the half cock position right there. So what we'll do is push in on the interlock. 
So the interlock, and this is great to get exposure to this now because it'll be important as we go forward. Interlock is right here, which kind of works like a disconnector. You can see it right there. So you push in on that, it'll allow us to cock the hammer back. All right, don't pull the trigger. Take your 764 Allen key, and we're gonna remove that set screw up top. All right, go ahead and remove the plug up front here. And that's what's got the firing pin and spring captured inside. And then your set screw, you can just pop that out and we'll set it aside for now. But reassembly, same, it's just real straightforward. Set screw into the plug and it all locates just right there. So we'll keep those items together. And real quick, I wanna show you how this spring goes in. It's kind of bizarre, almost counter to what you'd think would be natural. So you can see that cone-shaped firing pin spring, the way it sits in the plug, and then that firing pin goes through that little narrow portion. And that's the way it functions right there. So you can see if that firing pin spring was worn out, man, we chance the risk of losing part of that firing pin, which lead to light strikes and overall failure. We don't want that. So we'll set the firing pin and firing pin spring aside. We'll replace this spring towards the end because this is really the last thing we're gonna do. So we'll leave that for now. Now we can test the factory trigger pull before we get into it. So let's see what we got. All right, let's see what kind of factory trigger pull we got. Four pounds, 7.3 ounces. Let's take one more to confirm. Four pounds, 10.1 ounces. All right, moving on with the rest of the disassembly. We'll go ahead and remove this little plate right here. Give us access to the bolt that will remove the buttstock from the receiver. Now with that bolt upon reassembly, if you tighten it up too tight, or maybe you're missing one of the washers, I'll show you here in a second, but that'll actually impact the function. And you'll get a good look at it. So take your 3 16 inch Allen key. We're gonna remove that bolt that I'm talking about here. All right, at this point, should be able to separate the receiver from the buttstock. Just kind of wiggle it out. All right, this is what we're gonna be working on. Now I'm gonna show you this bolt here. So this bolt, it's got a washer and a lock washer. And you can see this one, it's pretty much two washers doubled up there is what it looks like. All right, so this is very important because it's gonna screw in here. Now the other thing that goes through here is the hammer strut and spring. So if this bolt, say I didn't put the washer or the lock washer back on and I just tightened it all the way up, it'd be impacting that hammer strut, which would prevent me from cocking the hammer back. So that's just a little tip there in case you have that issue, you know, something to help troubleshoot with. So we'll set all these components aside you know, put it back in the buttstock, make it simpler upon reassembly. It always helps to have them all organized in the little piles there. Now, focusing in on the receiver, this will be really straightforward. It's not too complicated. It just looks worse than it really is. So we'll just start by basically tapping out all these pins, removing the hardware, and we'll go through it here methodically. All right, so we're going to start down here on the trigger guard hinge pin. Back here, you've got the trigger hinge pin. Then you've got your sear and interlock hinge pin, then your hammer hinge pin back here. So I'm gonna flip it over. You'll notice there's a little slot right there for flathead screwdriver. This is the only pin that's got threads in it. So we'll loosen it up, and then we'll take our 3 seconds inch punch. So we loosen it up. Now we're gonna push through on the opposite side there to push that pin all the way out. You'll notice how that pin sits on top of that trigger, and there's a little spring and detent that compresses underneath that trigger guard hinge pin. So we're just gonna push it all the way through. And I like to point out those things, it just makes the reassembly a lot easier if we kind of understand it as we're going through it and memorizing it. Compress that trigger guard a little bit and that pin will pop the rest of the way out. So you can see there's the trigger guard hinge pin right there, little threads on the end. So we'll set that aside. And now we can slowly remove this trigger guard, get a good look at how it all locates. You can see there's a the trigger guard spring back here in the strut. All right, very important stuff. Memorize, slowly remove it. One key feature to point out now before we get into it is this little tab right here on the trigger guard. You'll notice that's a unique feature on it. It's got to be on the opposite side of the interlock. So there's the interlock right down there. And we'll go over that again here in a minute. I just like to point it out so you're thinking about it ahead of time. There's a trigger guard return spring. Set that down. Get a good look at the inside here. All right, so you see our trigger in here and there's a leg of the trigger sear spring right there. So it'll go through that hole in the trigger and there's that spring down inside, that trigger sear spring down in there. This is our interlock right here. 
all right? And this that strut for the trigger guard, obviously. And our hammer spring is captured down in here. So it'll all come apart here a little bit better in a second. So just point it out again, you can see which side that interlock is on. See, there's the interlock right there, which works like the disconnector. You have to compress that interlock so that you can cock that hammer back. So you can see which side it's on there. All right, and you don't, instead of memorizing which side it goes on, you know, when we put this trigger guard back on, we're gonna do that, we're gonna test and make sure. Be like, all right, so there's that post. It's trigger guard only goes in one way. So there's the post, interlock goes on the opposite side. Simple as that. So if you just wanna compress that interlock, you can kind of cock the hammer back and see how it all functions. You know, I'd always like to have a good understanding of how everything operates. So there it is. We just cock it back by pushing on that interlock. And now we can let that hammer go forward and we'll continue taking the rest of it apart. Now we'll take out that trigger hinge pin right there. So we'll just press it through with our 3 seconds inch punch. There's the pin right there. Set it aside. Now we'll remove our punch and take a look at everything as we pull it apart. All right, our trigger will just pop right out like that. You can see how everything locates in there. Notice that leg on the spring and the orientation. You can see how this trigger located in there as well. How it sat on top of that portion of the sear right there. It just sat like behind it just like that. All right, so we'll set that trigger aside. So you can see there's the hammer right there. And this is the L shape of the sear. So the other portion of that sear is above the hammer. It goes right up top and over. You can see it in there. See the rest of the sear there in that spring? That sear trigger spring right there? Really helpful stuff to memorize. Definitely when we want to put it back together. All right, so really good view now. You can see the interlock in there. See that sear right there. You see the hammer in there. And also up here, you can see how a portion of the sear sits on top of that hammer linkage there. If you look close enough there, you can see that little flat on the sear. There's that flat right there on the sear. So you can see the flat where that hammer locates on the sear. So if you want to put a little grease on there, which we're gonna do, that'll help lubricate that surface, make it a little bit smoother feeling. All right, so now we're gonna tap out that sear pin. Let's go ahead and set it down, 3 seconds inch punch, and just push it right out. And take a look here of it coming apart. We're gonna replace that spring in the same orientation. There's our sear hinge pin right there. It's a thicker pin than that trigger hinge pin. So we'll set that down. All right, now we can pull out the sear and just kind of take a look at everything, and that interlock's gonna come out as well. All right. You can see how everything is starting to pull apart here. You slide out the interlock. Right there, that's a good view of how it all went in. Interlock and the sear and that trigger sear spring. There they are. And really all that's left is that hammer inside. All right, so we'll tackle that here in a second. Let's go over these components. So you can see this is your interlock here, this is your sear here, and this is your trigger sear spring right here, and we'll be replacing this. All right, so we can go ahead and set those items aside for now. And let's go ahead and remove that hammer. Take our punch, 1 8 inch punch be fine. It's the biggest pin there. So you can see there's the biggest pin. It's a hammer hinge pin. So go ahead and set that aside. And now we'll pull out that hammer. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll remove this trigger guard spring strut locates right inside where that hammer hinge pin drops right through. So those locate together, that's what keeps it in place. And now we'll go ahead and push the hammer through the bottom. Pull it right out. Now we can pull out the hammer strut and spring. Comes out just like that. All right, now we've got it completely disassembled at this point. And we'll go over all the parts that we got on the table now. All right, so at this point, these are all the components you've got here for the receiver on your Pro Hunter. Now, we'll just go through it really quick. You've got your hammer up here, and this is the trigger guard strut right here for the trigger guard spring. And then your hammer spring obviously will locate in the hammer as well, but you've got these two struts, so don't get those confused. You can see the trigger guard strut's got a hole in it. The hammer strut does not. And then up here, you've got your assortment of pins. The biggest one is your hammer hinge pin, and then your sear hinge pin, and then your trigger hinge pin, and then your trigger guard hinge pin. And then you've got your interlock right here, 
and then you've got your sear. You've got your trigger slash sear spring right here, your trigger, trigger guard, your firing pin, and the firing pin spring inside, and then you've got the set screw that holds it all in place, and that's it. So we'll go ahead and replace the majority of the springs right now. We need to go ahead and grab our TC Encore Pro Hunter Endeavor Trigger Spring Kit by M Carbo. Includes everything you need to do this complete installation. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save this bag. Just make it handy to put all the factory springs in. You never know what you might need them for in the future. So these are the M Carbo springs here. What I'm going to do is just quickly take all the other springs off the table, throw them in the bag. All right, so don't need that factory trigger spring, don't need that factory trigger guard spring, don't need that factory hammer spring either. So we got three of them in there now. Your firing pin spring, we'll do a direct swap here in a second, just handy to pay attention to the orientation. There's a trigger guard spring here, I can tell because it's lighter, it's got more spacing on those coils. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it right next to that trigger guard strut. And this hammer spring, I can tell because it's Got some big thick coils on it and pretty tightly spaced. I'll go ahead and set that right on that hammer spring strut right there. And then the trigger guard spring right on the trigger guard spring strut. Next, we've got the trigger sear spring. Really easy to notice that one. So I'll set it right next to the sear. Now this other coil spring here, this is the locking bolt spring. So I'm gonna set that aside. That's for the barrel. Won't need that just yet. And then we've got our firing pin spring. All right, we'll go ahead and put that in. And this is our little assembly tool. This is great for putting that sear spring in. So we'll set that right next to the sear spring. And now let's focus on swapping out that firing pin spring. So we'll just pull up and out on that firing pin. All right, and you can see that little cone shaped spring, how it sits in there. Real simple, that pointed end is facing up at us. So we'll drop in the Carbo firing pin spring, just easy swap. Drop in that firing pin. All right, and that's all ready to go. So we'll set that aside and we'll put the little factory weaker spring aside. Having that heavy duty firing pin spring is gonna be a great way to ensure we don't have any broken firing pins in the future. All right, all those factory springs, I'll put them away. Now let's install the rest of these parts. The plug, firing pin, that little screw that goes with it. I'm gonna set those items aside. We won't need it till the end. We're gonna dry fire and check our trigger pull so we don't wanna have those installed. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna reassemble this in a way that makes sense so that we can test our trigger pull and then put it all back together without damaging the firing pin spring. All right, so for this first phase of the reassembly, we'll just need the receiver, the hammer, the hammer hinge pin, the hammer spring and strut, and then the trigger guard strut. Won't necessarily need that spring just yet because the trigger guard's gonna be going on later. So we'll just take the strut, put the spring aside for now. So pick up your receiver and we're gonna drop in that hammer spring and strut. So right into that hole, real simple and easy. Now it will be important once we get the hammer installed to obviously line up this little feature with the hammer. Get it mostly lined up like that and we'll go ahead and insert our hammer from the bottom. We'll just turn it up like that. I got my finger on top of that hammer spring and strut just to keep tension on it and keep it in place. And I'm fishing in that hammer just like that. Got my finger on top of that hammer spring and strut, just keep it all in place. And then what we need to do is let that hammer just continue to drop in. It won't drop through, so you can just let gravity help you out there. And you can see how that feature needs to locate inside that notch on the hammer. So we'll turn that feature so it lines up with the mating surface there on the inside of the hammer. Lining up with those channels right there. All right, good. That's perfect, that's what we want right there. So that hammer strut is located right inside that hammer. Perfect. All right, keeping tension on it. Now what we need to do is get in that trigger guard spring strut, line up the hole and drop in that hinge pin. So you can see, we need to line up that hole next, make sure we can press that hammer strut. All right, it's under good tension now. Just make sure it stays engaged in that little notch right there. All right, that hole's mostly centered at this point. All right, we're gonna take our trigger guard spring strut, drop it right in that notch there on the hammer, and that hinge pin's gonna go right through the center of it and keep it located in place. So now we just want to get all the holes lined up so you can see that strut moving back and forth there. It's mostly lined up. Take your bigger pin. Now one thing I like to do, just insert the pin from the bottom and then use your table to press down as you try to get everything in alignment. It works really well. So I'm just pushing down using the weight of the parts, kind of help as an assist, and then letting it basically do most of the work for me as I'm trying to line it up. So we're all lined up now. You can see hammer hinge pins in place. 
that hammer spring and struts in place. And then we've got the trigger guard strut in place as well. It's located right on the inside there of that hammer, right in between the hinge pin. So we're all set there. Phase one of the reassembly complete. All right, for the second phase of the installation, we're gonna go ahead and put in the sear, the interlock, the sear spring. And then we're gonna use the trigger guard to make sure that we're putting it on the correct side. So this feature right here obviously needs clearance. So if we just drop in the trigger guard, we know it only goes in one way. All right, and it's got this little feature on this side. So when you go opposite side here, when putting the interlock in, so the interlock's gonna go on this side right here because it needs to allow clearance, obviously, for this feature on the trigger guard. So we're gonna drop our interlock right in on this side. All right, so your sear is gonna drop right into the interlock like this. That'll be the orientation when it goes in. So what we'll do first, though, is we'll make sure we get this sear spring in place. So this shorter end right here is where that 90 degree bend, that big leg, goes on the sear, all right? And you'll notice that there's a side here that's got a little cut out and a completely smooth end over here. What I like to do is take that little assembly tool, put it in that little side that's got a complete circle on it, all right? It's gonna get it lined up perfect. And this other end here, take your 1 16th inch punch and just grab the inside loop of that sear spring just like that. And you're basically going to use that punch to pry that loop in place so you can get that little assembly tool right through. And once you start to get it started in the coil there, you can just press down on the table and get it to go the rest of the way home. All right, just like that. So we got our assembly tool in there holding that spring in the correct orientation, which is a lifesaver. This could be the most difficult part right here, trying to get that spring lined up. So. This is a great way to have it prepped and ready. So now, it makes this installation just simple. We're gonna drop this baby right in and press it out with the pin. So we'll grab our interlock right here and our sear with the sear spring in there, and we're gonna locate them together just like this. And they're gonna slide right in the assembly just like that. All right, and remember, the trigger's what's gotta locate right here on this leg. All right, so we'll go ahead and drop it in just like this, holding it together. Remember the side that we called out there initially. All right, I've got them right there in place, and that interlock's gonna drop right in, right there. Pretty dang easy right there. So now it's a matter of compressing it and dropping in that hinge pin. So that hinge pin's your next biggest pin on the table. So we'll go ahead and start it from the bottom. All right, there's the hammer hinge pin. This is our sear hinge pin right here. And what we wanna do is make sure that we've got portion of that sear over top of that hammer, which we do. So there's a hammer engagement surface in there, and the other portion of that sear is over top of it, right down in there. All right, so that's exactly the way we want it. Everything else is set up, interlock is situated perfectly. All right, so now we can press down on the table and just watch it from the top, looking through the top hole and pressing straight down just like that, one clean motion, get that assembly tool out, and then we'll take a look on the inside, and we've got that sear spring captured, which is amazing. That's what we want. I wanna make sure it's all there, compressing that pin the rest of the way through, all right? These pins are pretty easy just to push by hand, don't even really need a hammer. So you got the spring in the right orientation, that's where the trigger is gonna be locating right there. We look under here, you can see there's the hammer, the other leg, of that sear is on top of the hammer. We'll check up here just to be sure. There it is. So you can see there's the other leg of that sear on top of the hammer, which is good. And there's that little sear spring right there. So we got everything in the right spot. Awesome. Man, this is the hardest part and we've got it all finished at this point. So good job, keep going. Now it's just a matter of getting a couple easy things in there. So phase three is simple. You're just putting the trigger right in. So you grab that leg of the spring, right? Get it to hook right through that hole, just like that. Hear that good snap, I always love that sound. We got it to locate perfectly. So now it's a matter of just putting in that hinge pin, which is the last black pin on the table. So we'll go ahead and we'll just stick it through the bottom and we'll press from the top. All the while, we're gonna be pulling on this trigger, make sure we get it lined up perfectly, using the weight of the receiver there to push it all the way through, just like that. All right, so we got it all the way through, perfect. Located in place, that's exactly what we want. All right, cool. So it may kind of feel stuck like this. That's normal. It's just not finished 
right now. If you could mess with it, but I wouldn't advise it. You just have to hit the interlock to obviously release that trigger. So now let's continue on. All we got left is a trigger guard, trigger guard spring, and the trigger guard hinge pin. So real simple and easy, grab that trigger guard spring and place it over top of that trigger guard strut, just like that. And then we'll grab our trigger guard. We're gonna drop it right in. You obviously gotta get that trigger in the hole there and then drop in the trigger guard. You wanna line up that hole there for the strut and then we'll compress it. Keep your finger on that trigger guard spring. It'll try to jump out on you. Compress it. Now this one, you're gonna to have to keep some constant tension on it as you try to get it through. Now, this side here is a smooth hole. The opposite side has got the thread. So the small hole is a thread hole. The larger hole is a smooth hole to push that pin through initially. So we get it started and that's always a nice win. And then you come in here and, and then you'll see that spring loaded detent on the trigger, just press down on it and push that pin the rest of the way through. All right. Once it's completely captured and you see those threads are ready to start, you still have to compress that trigger guard to get it all the way in there. So don't be fooled if you start turning that screw and it's not going anywhere, that's why. So compressing that trigger guard, kind of wiggling it a little bit as we're starting to screw in that pin. There we go. All right, completely seated on both sides. Man, we are good to go here. We are almost there. So we've got the majority of it put back together minus that firing pin spring. All right, we're gonna do that at the very end. Let's go ahead and put this receiver back in the stock and test this new trigger pull. All right, so now we grab our receiver and our stock. We're gonna drop it right in. Then we'll take our bolt with the washer, washers possibly, and that locking washer, we'll drop it right through. We'll tighten it right up. Remember, if you're not able to cock that hammer, after this goes on, it's something to do with the spacing there. You might be missing a washer, or if it's a used one or whatever, maybe somebody lost along the way. We'll snug it right up. All right, now we can test this trigger pull. All right, so now we're gonna test this trigger pull, make sure there's no firing pin in here. That's the whole point of this. We don't wanna damage the firing pin spring. So you'll take your flathead and you're gonna push down on that interlock right there so that you can actually cock the hammer back. And now we can, ooh, that feels good. All right, now let's go ahead and measure this trigger pull. All right, let's see what we got. One pound, six ounces. That is nice. All right, let's take one more to confirm. Go ahead and cock the hammer back, pressing on the interlock. One pound, 5.7 ounces. That is perfect. All right, now we can go ahead and throw on that buttstock cover plate there. Just line up those screws and tighten them right up. All right, we're good there. Now we can put the firing pin back in. So what we need to do is cock that hammer back one more time, push on the interlock, pull the hammer back. Now we've got access to everything we need. Put the plug back in with the firing pin and the firing pin spring. And there's the orientation there. The wider base of that cone spring is on the plug. The narrow portion is touching the firing pin there. And you can see that threaded hole is gonna be up top. That's where the screw is gonna go, that top hole there, the firing pin on the bottom. So we'll basically just drop in that breech plug and we'll line it up on this side, looking through. All right, we got the firing pin in there. You can see it sticking out the bottom. Now we'll drop in the screw on the top. You can put some red Loctite on there to make sure that it stays in place. So we'll just set it down. Everything's installed. We just gotta grab a little bit of red Loctite, throw it on that screw. You know, red Loctite's high temp, high strength. So it'll stand up well to any sort of heat, which is good, considering where it's located in the firearm, all right. Picking this back up. Now we got the red Loctite on that bolt. Just make sure that breech plug is lined up correctly. You know, it's easy for it to kind of spin out of the way a little bit there. So we'll drop it in with the Loctite on it. We'll grab our 764 Allen key and we're gonna tighten it right up. You will wanna make sure that you get those threads started by hand. Don't wanna strip this out. All right, we got a good bite on there. I can feel it threading in well. All right, good and snug. I'm just gonna cinch it up a little bit. All right, good. There we go, man. We got the firing pin back in. Don't wanna dry fire it now. We don't wanna damage that spring. 
So we are complete at this point. Everything on the buttstock and the receiver is good, man. We got all the springs in here. We just need to focus on the barrel now. All right, now we just need to replace the last remaining spring, which is right here in the locking bolt, the locking bolt spring in here. So we'll tap out this pin right here. It'll release the locking bolt, which is in two halves. You see the orientation of these little tabs right here on the sides, how they're facing the bottom and there's that gap on the top. We want to replicate that. So we're going to do the exact same thing. You know, obviously this geometry is very important back here, the way it engages with the receiver. So when we pop this out, we'll put it back in the same way. It's in two halves. And you'll also notice here on the locking bolt, there's a cutout once we pop out this pin. So three 30 seconds inch punch, taps right out. There's the pin. And now it's just a lot easier to press down on the table. So I'm just gonna press down. Try to give you the best view here. All right, so there it is in two halves. And you can see that notch on the bottom. So that's key for that pin to locate through. So that's another easy way to remember how it goes in. And then the spring, if it doesn't just fall out, you can just grab it with your punch, pull it out or give it a tap on the table there. All right, there's a locking bolt spring right there. The factory one will set that aside. Don't need that anymore. We'll drop in the heavier duty locking bolt spring to ensure a nice tight lockup between that receiver and that barrel. Drops right in. Now it's just a matter of dropping in the locking bolt, same orientation, cut out down. Little tabs are facing down. You know, they're in two halves, just like this. I'm gonna clean it up real quick. Might even throw a little grease on there. Just want a nice smooth operation. Had a little grime on it. All right, gonna drop in the locking bolt. You can see it's in two halves there. Try to keep it lined up as best you can. It'll line up just fine once it's in. All right, I'm gonna press down on the table again because it just makes it so much easier. All right, locking bolt's in. I'm just gonna press down on the table to compress it and then push that pin right through. I'm really gonna have to compress it this time. And then use your hammer and start tapping it through. If the pin won't go in, it's because it's not compressed enough. All right, once it's in, all right, once it's in, we can level it out. You know, it's got a lot of recess on this side, so I'm gonna take my punch and just tap it in. Don't want any part of this pin sticking out. All right, I'm just checking both sides now, make sure that pin's completely recessed. It is, good. All right, now we can put the barrel back into the receiver here. So we just drop it in like this, just kind of line it up. I like to put a little bit of grease on this hinge pin, which makes it so much easier putting it back together, you know, and less wear and damage on the hinge pin as well. We're gonna stick it in from the bottom and then kind of watch the top as we're pushing down on the table. Should make for a smooth transition there. All right, we got it started. I'm gonna give it a few taps to drive it the rest of the way home. All right, good. We're set now. Look at that. Heck yeah. Nice and even on both sides. Now if the hammer's locked back there, you can go ahead and just depress the hammer just like that. Don't want to dry fire it in its current configuration. All right, now it's just a matter of putting the hand guard back on. So grab that. Should have your screws already set up. Remember the longer screws back here, shorter one up front. Drop that hand guard right on. All right, the screws are pushing right up. I'm just gonna double check and make sure the holes are lined up. Looks like I need to go a little further back there. All right, got the hole lined up here. Go ahead and get it started. Check the alignment here, good. Go ahead and snug them up. All right, we are good to go. Everything is back together at this point. Well, there you have it, guys. An all-around comprehensive upgrade for your TC Encore Pro Hunter. A fantastic way to take it to the next level, especially if it's older and you got a lot of these springs that are worn out. This is a great way to go about ensuring you get more lifetime and longevity out of this muzzle loader. Also, an excellent way to reduce that trigger pull from four and a half pounds down to pound and a half. Just can't beat it. 66% trigger pull reduction. Fantastic. Really love this. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it was thorough enough 
to give you a good comprehensive understanding of how it all goes together. Really appreciate your support. If you liked it, a good like or a subscribe always helps on YouTube. We love that. Sharing it helps too. Thank you, Carver Brother, for everything. We really appreciate your support. And as always, happy shooting.